Today in Iowa City, it's the battle for the Heartland Trophy, a Big Ten matchup between two schools separated by just 177 miles. 24th ranked Wisconsin in Iowa City to take on the Hawkeyes, a rivalry that dates back to 1894. Realistically, Wisconsin likely needs to win out to have a shot at winning the leaders' division and playing for the Big Ten title. They're a game behind Ohio State, but the Buckeyes beat the Badgers head-to-head -head at 5-3 and three overall. Iowa needs one win to become bowl eligible for the 12th time in the last 13 years. On a beautiful day, we welcome you to Kinnick Stadium. Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman will be joined in just a moment by Shannon Spake. Delighted to have you with us for what should be a hard-hitting physical matchup. These are two teams that look a lot alike. They both like to run the football. And in the case of Wisconsin, Chris, they're running the ball just about as well as any team in the country. Yeah, and that's their offense, Sean. Everything is set up off of that. And you have two outstanding running backs in James White and Melvin Gordon. Now, what James White brings to the table, he can run outside, but he also has this, this little inside power running game where he uses his vision and balance and can make it happen. The jet sweep, this is a staple of the Badger offense, and Melvin Gordon running it is, is, is explosive. And why? Because Andy Ludwig said this, Sean. He said the jet sweep is a good play, but it's a better play when you have a great player running it like Melvin Gordon. The Badgers are averaging 6.95 yards per rush. That's best in the nation. Their 297 yards per game is eighth in the country. But it's an Iowa defense that has been stout against the run. It's a tradition here at Iowa. They play outstanding defense. And their three linebackers are three of the top 12 tacklers in the Big Ten. They'll be tested today. Yeah, they're very good. They're seniors. They understand the game. And how do you stop this Wisconsin defense? Well, you need productivity from the linebacker position, not only physically, but mentally. Look for number 44 Morris to set the front it's important to do that to get everybody aligned to defend the tough Wisconsin running game you had a terrific game last week against Northwestern was the Big Ten defensive player of the week for the second time this season the Badgers and the Hawkeyes and the kickoff from Iowa City in just a moment Back in Iowa City, early November day, 47 degrees as we approach kickoff. The wind could be a factor out of the northwest at 13. That'll be from left to right as you watch the game from our game camera. And it's a forecast of a nice day. Enjoying the sunshine down on the field here, Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, All-American linebacker Chris Borland, no doubt the strength for this Wisconsin defense. Unfortunately for the team, he will not play here today. That decision made moments ago. Borland injured his right hamstring two weeks ago in the win against Illinois. He spent the bye week rehabbing. He didn't even practice with the team until Thursday. And this morning, the trainers had him out on the field. They were stretching him out. They had him run full speed. They wanted to see if he could do that without any pain. He even put on his uniform, came, up and war came out and warmed up with the team. And it was at that time that they made the decision, a team decision, I was told, that Borland will not play. Gary Anderson told me that. They're thinking big picture. They know it's important to have him here today, but it's more important to have him the rest of the season. And Sean Marcus Trotter will start for Borland. The big loss. They think Marcus Trotter, though, is good against the run, which will be important today against Iowa. But Borland's a candidate to be the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, one of the best linebackers in the country. And he's disappointed. Told us last night he thought there was a 90% chance that he'd play today. But he will not. Iowa won the toss and deferred. But Wisconsin will receive. Mike Meyer kicks off for the Hawkeyes. And a good kick with that breeze at his back. Kenzel Doe watched it go out of the back of the end zone. Well, here come the Badgers, one of the best offensive teams in the country, averaging 40 points per game under the direction of Joel Stavi. Redshirt sophomore quarterback from Greenfield, Wisconsin, just outside Milwaukee. Completing 63.5% of his passes, but he can be occasionally wild. He said being consistently more accurate, particularly on what looked like the easier throws, is where he needs to improve most. They start in the eye formation. James White, the tailback, behind the fullback, Derek Watt. He's ahead to the 28, a gain of three. Today's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. 
Well, you see Melvin Gordon, James White. Obviously, we talked about them in the open running football, but the biggest threat downfield is Jared Aberderis, who's having an outstanding year, coming off an eight-catch, 106-yard performance versus the Illini last week. White, again, the tailback. He's the starter. Just about an even number of carries for the year for White and Gordon. He took a pretty good lick as he got to the 32, ran into the safety, John Loudermilk. And he's three yards short of a first down. As a matter of fact, Chris, starting today, White had 108 carries and Gordon had 107. So if you want to keep both of them happy, that's a good way to do it. And another way that why they get the production they do, and this is something that's not talked about, it's a very competitive situation, and the hot hand usually gets the, the first opportunity to go. Wisconsin, outstanding team on third down, 48% for the year. Stavi out of the shotgun with White on his left hip. Iowa blitzes. Stavi got belted as he throws one up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Fluttering into that breeze and picked off by Tanner Miller. Third interception of the season for the senior from Kelowna, Iowa, in the 10th of the season for the Hawkeyes. He's going to have Kirksey, number 20, come through on touch to the quarterback, forcing the bad throw. Another thing Iowa does, they're able to match up man to man. Even though that ball's thrown shot, nobody was open. He just got hit, which altered the course of the throw. Tanner Miller, a smart player in good position, finds the ball and is able to seal the deal for the Hawkeye D. Rare turnover by Wisconsin since the start of the 2010 season. They've committed 10 fewer turnovers than any team in the country. Deep throw. Jake Rudock going down the sideline for Jake Doozy, one of their tight ends, and Michael Caputo, the safety, had coverage. He's That's a remarkable number, too, Chris. Yeah. 39 turnovers since the start of 2010 for the Badgers entering today. The next fewest is 49 by Alabama. Rudock on a play fake. Dumps it in the flat. Jake Doozy fights for every inch. Out to the 47-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Ethan Armstrong wrestled him to the boundary. Rudock. First year starter, sophomore from Weston, Florida, in South Florida. And off to a solid start. Coach is very pleased with his play. They put a lot on him on the line of scrimmage, Sean, to get them in the right play against the defense where they feel they have an advantage. Third down and eight. Four man rush, but they pressure Rudolph. He's a decent runner, as he demonstrates there. He's down at the 42, three yards shy of the first down. And Kirk Ferentz wastes no time sending the punt unit out. Well, I think that right there is a belief in your defense. And this game has the feel, at least this early into the game, that it's going to be a field position game because of the sound defenses that both teams play. Hunter Cornbrath, the putter. Kenzel Doe back for it. And a fair catch made by Doe at the eight-yard line. So Wisconsin survives its rare turnover. No score. Less than three minutes gone by. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Vizio. Back in Iowa City, Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Shannon Spake, the dean of Big Ten coaches Kirk Ferentz in his 15th season as head coach of the Hawkeyes trying to get them back to a bowl game after a rare season out of the bowl picture. They were four and eight last year. Joel Stavi on first down pressure throws short game to the 14 yard line. Nice catch by Jared Abraderis like Stavi. Abraderis a former walk on two pretty good walk ons to have come into your program. Yeah and that's Wisconsin's tradition. I mean they're able to identify players and actually Abraderis came to Wisconsin originally thought he was going to be a track man outstanding hurdler in the state of Wisconsin. Set a couple of state records as a hurdler. 
Wasn't recruited by the football program. He's become one of the best receivers in the history of Wisconsin football. Melvin Gordon now in at running back. Leading rusher in the Big Ten. He got a rude welcome from Anthony Hitchens, one of those hard-hitting Iowa linebackers. Sean, they're very good. They're smart. They're seniors. They play well off of each other. And they know what they're doing and knowing where they're supposed to go and run responsibility. That's what makes this group stand out above any other linebacker crew in the Big Ten. Hitchens, James Morris, Christian Kirksey, all with more than 200 career tackles. As a trio, they have more tackles than any linebacker core in the country. Third down and three. Stabby after the short set. Incomplete pass, very well defended, looking for Aberdares. B.J. Lowry broke it up, the senior from Cincinnati. Well, I love smart football players and smart football plays. This is discipline. Lowry, number 19, is going to come and beat the receiver to the route. But this is what I like, Sean. That left hand stays off of the receiver and comes down with the right hand to play the football. Outstanding effort by B.J. Lowry. Drew Meyer punts for Wisconsin, the leading punt returner in the country. Devontae Martin Manley back deep, averaging 24 per return into the wind. And it gets buffeted. Hit near the 45 and bounced back. Jacob Pedersen downed it. A great field position for the second possession in a row for the Hawkeyes. Just a 23-yard punt into the breeze. ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Pink visiting team locker room here at Kinnick Stadium, the brainchild of the legendary Iowa coach Hayden Fry, who was a psychology major at Baylor. He read that the color pink had a calming effect on people, so he ordered the locker room to be painted pink, hoping that he would calm the opponents. We had that when I played here, and the, the sense of smell pregame always overtook the sense of sight, so it never really bothered us. I don't even want to ask what that means. <laughs> Mark Weissman. Powerful Iowa runner. Runs over some would-be tacklers, and Desmond Southward, the safety, finally got him on the ground. Well, he's not going to beat you with speed, but he does bring this to the table, power. And Desmond Southward comes in there. What he did not do was bring his feet or wrap his arms, and that's why Weissman was able to bounce off for extra yardage. Rudolph in the single coverage, and an errant throw behind Martin Manley. Here's Robert Flores. It's Lafayette. They have a very favorable schedule until they get to the regular season finale against Michigan. Damon Bullock, part of a running back tandem for Iowa, largely divides time with Weissman. Marcus Trotter in for Chris Borland made the tackle, but it is a first down at the 29-yard line. Marcus Trotter. They feel comfortable with him playing this type of offense, and they should, after this play, using his hands well, shedding the blocker one-on-one, -on -one, and making a good, solid, fundamental tackle. And that's hamstring, Sean. I had one as a player and as a linebacker. They take about four weeks, depending on the severity of it. Whistles before the snap for a false start against the false Hawkeyes. Start. Offense number 86. Five-yard penalty, still first down. John O'Neill, the referee, C.J. Fedorowicz, the excellent tight end, guilty of the early movement. Nobody likes penalties, but this offense is not explosive. They're built to be patient, and they want to stay ahead of schedule. And so it's a little bit more of a struggle for them to be first and 15, stay an explosive offense to be first and 15 because of their non-explosiveness at the skill positions. And that's a big difference between these two teams, Wisconsin, Makes a lot of big plays on offense. Iowa very few. They have to work their way down the field. Incomplete pass. 
intended for Kevontae Martin Manley, Iowa's leading receiver. Sojourn Shelton, the true freshman from Fort Lauderdale, had the coverage. Yeah, and the best receiver has to make a great catch because that was an outstanding throw by Rudolph, low and away. And that's one that Martin Manley normally brings down. Lone opportunity. Second and 15. They are just about on the fringe of field goal range. Kirk Ferentz told Shannon before the game on the field the 35 yard line in this direction is about where they'd try one from. Screen pass. Nice catch by Damon Bullock. And he's down at the 22 yard line. Tripped up by Tanner McAvoy, who was a quarterback earlier this season, made the shift over to defense. Eric Landish also in on the stop. Yeah, this is making a play, and they like the screen in the red zone area or close to the red zone. Damon Bullock does a good job of sealing that catch and transitioning into the run after the catch in a timely manner. Third down and four. Jake Rudock out of the gun. Very close to the first down. Brendan Kelly the tackle. This might require a measurement at the 19 yard line. Short according to that yellow line, although that's not official. And I, I, I kind of go for it here, Sean. I really do. I think that you're at home, your defense is playing well. You have just a little half a yard to go if they're short at all. Sneak it behind that big offensive line. The offensive line, one of the strengths of this Iowa team. And that's been the case for the most part through the years. Under Kirk Ferris, they are inches short. Crowd wants Kirk to go for it. It's a good move because you still are, are creating field position for your defense. You're setting a tone. You're at home. Why not? The decision by Kirk Ferentz to defer has already paid off for him. The short punt by Wisconsin into the wind. Stabby's interception was a flutter ball into the breeze. Fourth and inches. They give it to the powerful Weissman, who pulls his way inside the 15, dragging Derek Landish along. Six yard gain for Weissman. He gets the bulk of the carries. The only running back with more attempts in the Big Ten this year is Fitz Toussaint of Michigan. Weissman again. Chopped down by Michael Caputo. And Chris, when you asked Weissman yesterday, where can you get better? Mark said, I can break more tackles. Yeah, and make a guy miss. And right there, if he would have made Caputo miss, and he almost did. And he realizes that you know he doesn't have to run everybody over because the defenders are expecting to be run over. So if he can get a little bit of shake, he'll be that much more of a dangerous running back. Damon Bullock, the junior, is in for him now on second and eight. Stretch to the right. And well pursued by the Badgers, led by Brendan Kelly, the senior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Both of these teams outstanding defensively in the red zone. Iowa has allowed the fewest red zone touchdowns in the country. Five and Wisconsin not far behind. They've given up eight. Both defenses are extremely intelligent. They're smart. They don't mis make mistakes down there in the red zone is one of the reasons why they're so solid. On third and six from just inside the 11. Rudolph with a lot of time but no receivers. Now he has a man and it's incomplete. Off the hands of Devontae Martin Manley. He's had a couple of chances to help his quarterback and hasn't been able to hang on. And this is what I talk about intelligence. Outstanding coverage right there. They try a little bunch route, but everybody picks up guys in their zone. Now Manley's coming across your, your vision right there, and that's his second drop, and it's a classic let me look away before I secure the football. Two drops for the normally sure-handed Manley. And now a field goal try for Mike Meyer. And it is right down the middle from 28 yards. Iowa 
first on the board with 6.20 to go in the first quarter. It's 3-0 Hawkeyes. Back at one of the great venues in college football, Kinnick Stadium, 87th meeting between Iowa and Wisconsin, and it couldn't be any more even. The series tied all time. They're three and three in the last six. They're six and six in the last 12. They're eight and eight in the last 16. <laughs> and they had a wild game the last time they met in 2010. It was here. Wisconsin rallied to win late. They haven't played the last two seasons after the Big Ten realigned, but that'll be corrected when it realigns again. Maryland and Rutgers coming on board. After the field goal by Mike Meyer, he kicks off. And Kenzel Doe takes an E. We were here for that meeting. Both teams were ranked on October 23rd, 2010. Ricky Stanzi to Martin McNutt. Hawkeyes up by three in the fourth quarter. And then a bold move by Brett Bielema. Fake punt from deep in their own end on fourth and four. Had Norman ran for the first down. Kept the drive alive. And Monty Ball muscled his way into the end zone from eight yards out. The replay confirmed. He did break the plane and the Heartland Trophy. Went to Madison since that was the last meeting between these two schools. It's been in Madison ever since. Joel Stavi handed it off to James White. Ahead for three to the 28. Mike Hardy and Louis Trinka Passat made the tackle. It, two schools that mirror each other as they're going a little bit of tempo right now, both with the same football philosophy. And here's the Jet. And I am ready for it. Melvin Gordon dumped behind the line of scrimmage. The safeties, Tanner Miller and John Loudermilk, saw it coming. The Iowa coaches said there are some hints when they're going to the Jet sweep. And right there, you saw what they decided to do was bring the safety up right away. When they see the motion of Gordon coming across, number 37, Loudermilk attack the line of scrimmage so he can get the proper angle to slow down the jet sweep. Well, Gordon dug for a loss. Third down and 11. Wisconsin doesn't have a first down yet. Stabby. Had time, ducked it off short, but Aberderis tackled in space, or rather Penzel Doe tackled in space by Christian Kirksey. Sean, I think he missed Aberderis down the field at the first down step. They run a level route. They hit you low, they hit you high. You're going to see Doe come across the screen right there. And there's Aberderis on the outcut at the sticks. That's a throw that he has to have the confidence to make. Drew Meyer punts again into the breeze. Iowa should get good field position again. Rugby punt this time. Low kick to keep it under the win. It still took a bad bounce for the Badgers. Down at the 44-yard line. Leo Musso. Tonight, ABC's Saturday Night Football. Two undefeated ACC teams clash. Seventh-ranked Miami and Tallahassee to take on the third-ranked Florida State Seminoles. Presented by the new windows tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Miami's at a rally back in recent weeks to win from double-digit deficits, including last week at home against Wake, while Florida State's just pounding everybody. Yeah, we, and we saw them last week, Sean. They're solid all the way around. It would take a great effort for the Hurricanes to get them. Play fake by Jake Rudock. Hit as he throws, and it falls incomplete. Florida State has won its last three games by a combined 161 to 31. Conrad Zagzebski put the heat on Jake Rudock. I like the, the play calling so far from Iowa as far as throwing the ball on first down because Wisconsin is stacking that box knowing that Iowa likes to pound it. Trying to loosen them up with the pass. Greg Davis, his second season here, long run with Mac Brown, his offensive coordinator at Texas. Sean Daniels, freshman running back, who they think has a bright future, gets his first carry of the day. Conrad Zagzebski and Sojourn Shelton made the tackle. 
Well, that's a big zone running play. And one of the areas Iowa struggles at running back is to me, I think their running backs miss a lot of holes, Sean. And that's why they struggle a little bit. And they don't have that guy. Now, Daniels Jr. is a young guy, and he's only going to get better. But when you run that stretch, remember, that ball can hit from tackle to tackle as long as the running back has the vision to see the holes open. And they struggle a little bit in that area. Third down and eight. Everybody standing up on that Wisconsin defense. They do that a lot, and the throw is too high for Tavon Smith. Sojourn Shelton had the coverage again. Well, Iowa really not taking advantage of the excellent field position enjoyed here in the first quarter after Kirk Ferentz elected to take the win. His defense has been strong. The punts have been bad for the Badgers. The last one was just 27 yards. Just three points up for the Hawkeye. Connor Cornbrath putting with the win, and it's too strong. It'll come out to the 20. And Iowa defense has caused a lot of problems for Joel Stabe in Wisconsin. Yeah, right there, Kirksey came in late on a delayed blitz and forced a bad throw. Carl Davis has handled his man one-on-one, -on -one, and everybody knows if you can get pressure with four, that creates problems for any type of passing offense. Badgers have just 18 yards offense. They don't have a first down. They're averaging two yards per play. It's a team that averages over 500 yards of offense per game. 11th in the country at 513. Melvin Gordon, the running back. Christian Kirksey made the tackle. Pick up a five for Gordon, who is from Kenosha, Wisconsin, but coming out of high school admitted to Iowa in August of 2010 and was verbally committed to the Hawkeyes for about three months. Then he changed his mind, wanted to stay closer to home. Said the Hawkeyes were disappointed, but Kirk Ferentz said on his radio show here morning that he understood. Young men sometimes decide after further review they want to remain a little closer to home. And it's 17 and 18. They don't know what to do on that night as opposed to six months from <laughs> Gordon again. Ball is out as B.J. Lowry made the tackle, but the Badgers got it back. Melvin Gordon has never lost a fumble in his career. Now more than 200 career touches. Yeah, this is almost broken right here. And I like what Lowry going. You see that shot by wrapping his arms. He feels that football. Then he's able to start raking at that ball to get it out. But I'm so impressed with the positioning of Iowa's defense. They never get out of position. That's not just my opinion. That's the opinion of Gary Anderson and Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator. Very smart defense, sound. Third and three. They're 0 for 3 on third down. Stop of the gun. Flag down. They'll stop the play. Like Tyler Merritt's move. Still start. Offense number 61. Five yards penalty, still third down. Here's the left tackle. Our mammoth offensive line that has 6'6", 321 pounds. Oh, they're huge. Now, look for them to try to get Aberdeen involved. They had him open on the last third down the outcut. They missed him. He's not involved in this offense. And if Stoppy's not going well, he's going to go to his comfort, and his comfort, number four. Aberdeen is wide to the left. Covered by the true freshman, Desmond King. Hawkeye showing blitz. They rush five. Stavi throws too high for Aberderis, and King was nearby. Well, playing maybe against the best receiver in the Big Ten, the true freshman holds his own. Playing man coverage does a good job of breaking up on the football and bad pass again by Stavi. He's two for five for 11 yards and an interception. So two punts that have gone 23 and 27 yards. Here's the third coming from Drew Meyer to Cavante Martin Manley. Another one just crushed by the breeze. And another bad bounce. Oh, look like you're pitching wedge. Yes, we have to play a ball with a little less spin. <laughs> Connor O'Neill found it at the 41 yard line to the Badgers. Big Ten college football action continues right after this game. More action on ABC. The in-state battle, spirited rivals, 21-ranked Michigan, 22nd-ranked Michigan State. ABC's college football presented by Kate Jewelers. 
three thirty Eastern time Michigan a high flying offensive team eighth in the country in scoring against one of the best defensive units in the country coordinated by Pat Narduzzi at Michigan State. Taking advantage of the breeze the field position great that punt was 19 yards shortest of the three. Here's the freshman Daniels to the corner. He got belted. Downs lost the ball, but the ball went out of bounds as well. After Desmond Southwood delivered a blow. Anytime you have a center number 63 that can pull, that helps the interior line get better angles. And he set that corner. Not a devastating block, but a position block, which allowed Daniels Jr. to get to the edge. Second down and four for Jake Rudock. Out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School in South Florida, perennial power in high school football. Played in a lot of big games before he got to Iowa, nationally biased high school games in major college and pro stadium. Weissman in trouble and submarine for a loss by Marcus Trotter. Back to the 37 yard line. Well, Dave Arant has got to be Aranda, the defensive coordinator, has to be pleased with Marcus Trotter. Submarining the block of Blythe and able to get the trip up. And Chris Borland there to congratulate his teammate and his substitute. Not surprising to Borland, even though he isn't going to play, want to be in uniform with his teammates today. Out with a hamstring injury. As Shannon reported he was injured early in their last game two weeks ago against Illinois. So Trotter saw a lot of action in that game. Everybody standing on the defense again on third and six. Rudolph throws short, well short of a first down. Martin Manley made the catch that time. Darius Hillary was right there. Ball be spotted at 35. It'll be fourth down and four. And this is right about where Coach Barron said he would try a long field goal with the win. But he's changed his mind now that it's game time. The putter's out. Well, I, I think, again, the decision is made that his defense is playing so well, and let's win the field position battle. And so far, they've done that this first quarter. And they were smart to hurry up and get the punt off before they had to punt into the win. And Kenzel Doe made the fair catch. Near the nine yard line. That's the end of the quarter. Iowa took advantage of the win and has a 3 0 lead. After one quarter, defensive struggle. Wisconsin didn't have a first down going into the breeze in quarter number one, but now they'll have that breeze at their backs as the Badgers start out first and 10 in their own eight yard line. Now you made the point. We'll see if Wisconsin's able to throw the ball. With a little assist from the win as opposed to hurting it. James White is the tailback. Joel Stabi a play fake. Throws deep for Aberderis who can't hang on at the 28 yard line. Try to make a hands catch. Desmond King got there. But he was open. And they couldn't complete the pass. Not a ball, but a catch ball, especially if you have the ability of Aberderis. And this is a catch that he normally brings down and secures you mentioned he was not recruited by Wisconsin football at Berderis. had some interest from smaller schools like Mankato and Monona was going to run track at Wisconsin but in the summer right before he was to start at Wisconsin his dad called the football coaches and asked if he could walk on they said he could and Aberderis has become a star. James White, the ball carrier, for about eight. Well, there's their answer right there to Iowa bringing their safety up against the jet sweep. That time they faked it to Clement, and they hit him right up the gut with James White. It's a successful counter by the Badger offense as far as what Hawkeye defense is doing to defend the jet sweep. The longest gain of the day for Wisconsin so far, eight yards. Third down and two. Will they get their first first down of the day? Will be up to James White. First down, Wisconsin. Out to the 21-yard line, stopped by James Morris, the senior from Solon, Iowa, about 10 minutes away. He's also an outstanding student, just picked as one of the National Football Foundation scholar athletes. 3.84 GPA in political science. Move the postgraduate scholarship. Be honored at the College Football Hall of Fame dinner in New York in December. Got a B minus in basic acting. It dragged down that GPA. He wasn't happy about it either. 
White catches the swing, gets 10. Here's Robert Flores. Nothing into the first quarter. Acting like a national championship contender, but a talented trio ahead of them, Alabama, Oregon, and Florida State. They fake the jet action. Stavi couldn't find a receiver. He's going to run. Out of bounds. Did well get an extra yard as he walked along the sideline to the 37-yard line. They'll need four for a first down after a pickup of six. Well, again, everything is off the jet sweep fake. I mean, now they, they ran a jet sweep. They set up the middle run with James White, and now they hit him on the play-action pass. Iowa wasn't fooled. They're very smart. They didn't jump up on the play-action. They were solid downfield in coverage. Gordon is the running back. Extra tight ends into the game for the Badgers. Stabby stumbled and fell down as he backed away from center. Usually the case happens as somebody steps on his foot as he's trying to get out. And right there, you see the center, Lou Allen, step on his ankle, which screws up the footwork. Big break for the Hawkeye defense. See if they get Pedersen involved a little bit, Sean. This is his type of very a big, tall, tight end. Number 48 lined up on your left side. James White back in running back. He's a better receiver than Gordon. Everybody standing up on the Iowa front. Morris came on a blitz and they get him down. Morris got a hold of him and then help came. And it's a sack for the Hawkeyes. Well, that's his third sack in two weeks. And all these linebackers are good blitzers. Take a look at James Morris on the snap of the ball. He's in good position. They run a little double X game. Two guys slant to him. He goes around them. Wisconsin's offense line doesn't adjust. And again, he's able to finish when he gets there. Drew Meyer on to punt. Had a miserable first quarter punting into the wind, so he hammers this one. Devontae Martin Manuel. Brings it back 10 yards. Gary Anderson thought there was a blocking infraction. He is furious on the Wisconsin sideline. 50 yard punt. We mentioned as we went to break, Gary Anderson was upset, and this is likely what he was upset about, Chris. Yeah, you're going to see Riley McCarron hit A.J. Jordan. Sometimes it's not devastating, but it can be effective, and that was a definite block in the back that the Hawkeyes got away with. I can understand his frustration. That's one that they usually don't miss because they're pretty good against protecting those guys that are covering punts. So a 50-yard punt by Meyer. Devontae Martin Manley. They returned it for 10. Jake Rudock slings it out to Matt Vandenberg. Yanked down by Sojourn Shelton. Gain of six. Here's Shannon. Well, Sean, tension building with the Wisconsin coaches and a defensive coordinator, Dave Aranda, is not immune to that. He had his guys over here. He doesn't feel that there's communication. He said when Iowa calls the audible, they have got to look to the sidelines. They've got to look at the defensive coach because they're going to change the call. Well, that could be where they're missing their leader, Chris Borland, Sean, to get that communication going. Mark Weissman, about a yard short of the first down, wrestled down by Brendan Kelly. Chris Borland not playing today out of the hamstring injury. And they felt Marcus Trotter, his standing was particularly well suited in a game like this where there'd be a lot of power runs coming at the Wisconsin defense. He's not quite as good in space. I think he's his own against this offense so mm -hmm. far today. And this is the advantage Rudock brings is the audible at the scrimmage. Sean Daniels, the freshman, running patiently. Adam Cox, the fullback, leading the way. Bo Allen and Mike Caputo made the tackle. It's a first down for the Hawkeyes at their own 42. Systematic, take their time, they're patient. They trust themselves, and they trust number 15 to put them in the right play at the line of scrimmage. Blitz picked up beautifully by Bo. Rudock took advantage. 
Fired a strike for a first down. Tavon Smith. Tackled by Mike Caputo. Great blitz pickup and a 17-yard gain. You said it. It starts with Bullock picking up the blitz, then Tavon Smith beating his man off the line of scrimmage on the slant route, then a perfectly thrown ball hitting in stride. Outstanding execution by Greg Davis's offense. Bullock, the running back now. Rudock flipped it forward. Uh, Bullock inside the 20. Rudock had running room himself, but why not flip it to a speedier man? Marcus Trotter made the tackle. Well, I love down on guys. <laughs> Sean, I love a good point guard as your quarterback. He could take it. You're right, but why not get it to the guy that does that for a scholarship? Get it to Bullock, the running back, so he can do what he does best in the open field. 24-yard game. Damon Bull remains the running back. And two tight ends for the Hawkeyes as they operate from the 17. Well, you see the push of that offensive line. They move that defensive front backwards, creating some running room for Bullock. Marcus Trotter and Connor O'Neill made the tackle. They do a good job of what we call zone blocking. Each guy will step to one direction and they play off of each other. And much like coverage, they'll block the guy that enters their zone as opposed to attacking the defender. Adam Cox, the fullback offset. Take the bullet. Rudolph running out of time. Throws it away. Flag down in the offensive backfield. Ethan Armstrong was putting the heat on Rudolph. It's a holding call against Iowa. Well, this is a big part of their offense is the bootleg look. Holding. Holding. Offense number 86. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. C.J. Fedorowicz, the tight end. C.J. is a good player, one of the top five in Todd McShay's draft ratings for tight ends. Big, tall target at 6'7", 265. And he didn't really need to hold there because the play was going away from him. All he has to do is just slow the guy down and tap. And split him out a bit on second down and 16. Quick throw. And the tackle made immediately. Damon Powell, the catch. Desmond Southward, the tackle. Well, the problem with that, Sean, they're throwing that ball all the way across the field, which is allows the defense to rally and defeat the blocks. If you're going to run that jet or that jet screen, usually you like to do it from the middle of the field or to the hash mark so the defense doesn't have time to rally. And into the wind, this is on the fringe of field goal range now for Iowa. We got four for four, but that last completion went for a loss. Of the yard. Out of the gun. Again, the rush picked up nicely. He throws on the run into traffic, and a diving attempt made. It is a catch by Fedorowicz. A yard short of the first down, however. I might get a holding call, but I'll come back and show you. I'll make a great catch on the bootleg. And good job of Rudock leading for Dorwitz. Lone away. I would try to get up quickly. And the officials are going to stop the play for a replay review to make sure that was a catch. Ken Baker is the replay official. Well, if there's no question that it's a catch, it's frustrating for Iowa's offense because they have something where they do hurry up to get up there to get the first down. That's a catch. Mm -hmm. And that's very frustrating for a coach because you plan for that. You want to run that short yarded situation or that sneak so the defense doesn't get set. That's why you run a hurry up. And to me, that's not even right. a question whether it's a catch. So you don't stop the flow of the game because of that. And the replay folks have equipment, you know, they can be looking at it as the team's running up to the line of scrimmage. So I agree with you. you know, that's a case where you want to make sure the call on the field is right, but you also don't want to affect the competitive balance of the game. 
I don't even know, you know, maybe now he's just trying to cover his own tracks and take a while yeah. to make it seem like it's a tough ruling because it isn't. Well, and, and again, I, I, they weren't hurrying up to, to slow the replay booth down. They were hurrying up because Wisconsin wasn't set, and you have a play for that right away. That's a well-coached team. All the offensive linemen ran up to that ball to get lined up. After further review, the ruling on the field of a completed pass is confirmed. Fourth and one at the eight-yard line. Well, it's confirmed, but obviously it has changed the situation significantly now. They're still going to go for it on fourth down and one from the eight. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. Weissman looks to have the first down. Mark Weissman inside the seven. Connor O'Neill and Marcus Trotter made the tackle. There's two guys in the Big Ten, Sean, that I would want to get a fourth and one. Mark Weissman and Carlos Hyde. Weissman's tough. Carlos Hyde has not been tackled for a loss yet this year. Those are two powerful inside runners. Iowa two for two on fourth down today. Weissman is powerfully built, just six feet tall, but 236 pounds. Junior out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. They give it to him again, and he is wrestled back by Connor O'Neill. Bo Allen also in on the stop. O'Neill is a great friend of the quarterback for Iowa, Jake Rudock. They played high school football together at St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, and they were texting and good read this week back and forth, and it's it's easy to run through when to make a tackle when nobody blocks you. <laughs> so, but it's a good read by him. Rudock played with Connor O'Neill with the Badgers, James White, then. Desmond Southward on that outstanding St. Thomas Aquinas team. Rudock on a design roll, throws. Martin Manley made the catch. And another former teammate of Rudock in high school, Southward, there for the stop at the three yard line. Third down and goal from the three for Iowa. They lead three to nothing, under six minutes to go in the half, and an injured player for the Hawkeyes. It's the right guard, Jordan Walsh. The first guy in for Iowa would be Andrew Donnell, number 78, if Walsh has to take a few plays off. And in this type of area, big third down and three. Look for C.J. Fedorowicz, the 6'7 tight end. This is where he makes his living or will make his living once he's allowed to make a living That's in the NFL. Earns his scholarship. Yeah, thank you, Sean. We talked to Greg Davis yesterday about the offensive line. He said Walsh is the quiet one in the group just effectively goes about doing his job I like both offensive lines I love them because of their physical and they finish blocks it's not enough for them just to make contact I mean if they have a chance to drive you into the dirt or in this case the ground up tires they will Gary Anderson the Wisconsin coach was particularly fond of big number 68 there on the left of your screen Brandon Scherf the left tackle he said if I had to vote he's the best tackle I've seen in the Big Ten they help Walsh off I think he's 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 the best run blocker that I've seen I think there's at times in pass coverage where he pass protection excuse me where he struggles just a tad but he's very very good a future NFL player but he's physical and nasty he's a former quarterback you believe that look at the size of that guy 6 5 3 15 number 24 on Mel Piper's big board 24th ranked prospect that would equate to a first round pick third and goal from the three a blitz and a flag down. It looked like there was movement along the Iowa Offense line. Offense number 78. 78. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You mentioned Andrew Donnell was really the first backup across the entire offensive line. A little too anxious to get started on his first snap. Yeah, and that, that's the case. I mean, when you have substitutes in there, they're anxious to get going. He's not used to the cadence or the, the voice inflection of the quarterback. And a lot of times you'll see that. That's not unusual. And they were looking for Fedorowicz on a little basketball route where he's going to post up. Now they're a little out of the field. Tavon Smith at the top of your screen. Tavon Smith, excuse me, working one-on-one. -on -one. 
Just a three-man rush. They drop eight. Rudolph has time. He's across the line of scrimmage and out of bounds just inside the five. Chased across the boundary by Brendan Kelly. And here comes the field goal team. So this is the fifth possession of the game for Iowa, the fourth time that they've been in Wisconsin territory. And if it goes as they hope, they'll wind up with just six points on four trips into the Badger end of the field. Here's Mike Meyer. Into the breeze, but you wouldn't think it would be a factor. The angle might be a bigger factor from 22 yards. Hunter, Hunter Cornbrath is the holder. And the kick is good. 4.52 to go until halftime here in Iowa City, Wisconsin, without Chris Borland. Trailing six to nothing. ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. Brought to you by the new Windows. And Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Wisconsin and Iowa have been playing for the Heartland Trophy since 2004. The rivalry goes back to 1894, but they started playing for that handsome trophy a decade ago. Iowa has the advantage 4-3 to three since they started playing for the Heartland Trophy. And Wisconsin has it in its possession. They won the last meeting in 2010. That trophy was designed by a former Iowa football player, Frank Strub, not him. <laughs> I, I think it's a beautiful design. I just don't know why it's a pig. We already have the Ford of Rosedale trophy. It's a me. bull mounted on a oh. walnut bull. There you go. There's walnut is apparently native to both Wisconsin and Iowa. There's Kenzel Doe uh, to the That's why you're 29 shot. yard line. <laughs> Travis Perry made the tackle. Back in Iowa City. Time for today's Affleck trivia question. We just mentioned this is the game for the Heartland Trophy. One of 13 games within the Big Ten matching conference teams that play for a trophy. We want to know which conference has the second most in-conference trophy games. The Big Ten leads by a wide margin. They love their trophy games. That's why I got confused. <laughs> Bull the pig, we can have him. Here's Melvin Gordon. Taking advantage of the best starting field position of the day for Wisconsin. He rushes for 13 yards out to the 41. Well, and this is a good job by the offensive line, getting Gordon to the second level. The problem was there was a mental error on number 31 Hitchens, who jumped inside, creating that open gap for Gordon to hit. This is Wisconsin's sixth possession. Their average starting field position has been the 19-yard line. On first and ten, Gordon again. That's very little. Here's Robert Flores. Watch the ESPN app. There goes Robert trying to steal our viewers again. <laughs> <laughs> we know that's not the case. Second and ten. Corey Clement went in motion in that jet sweep action, and it's James White up the middle for another first down. Chopped down by Desmond King, and finally the Badgers look like they might be establishing some rhythm on offense. A gain of 11. Well, see, they're bringing the safety down to defend the jet sweep, which creates the middle open for James White. Here's the fake with Clement. See the safety committing, Sean Laudermilk committed to the jet sweep, which allows some space in the middle of the field. And it's a good job of adjusting by Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator. James White. Could not get away from Anthony Hitchens. Hitchens, the leading tackler for the year for Iowa. Second in tackles per game in the Big Ten behind only Jonathan Brown of Illinois. Hitchens averages 10 a game. Well, he's in the right gap that time, and once he gets there, he's able to finish. Wisconsin going quickly. Play fake by Joel Stavi. Nowhere to go. Spins off some hits, however. And gains yardage to the 44. 
He's a big, strong guy, Stavi at 6'5", 225 pounds, and he absorbed the hit and kept going. Yeah, and so I think what he's doing a little bit, he's locking into Aberderis. He's looking for his comfort zone because he had Pedersen sitting wide open about 12 yards in the middle of the field, but he's locked on number four, Aberderis. Very loud PA system pumping the music, making it a little bit harder for Stavi and the Badgers between plays. Two minutes to go in the half. Just one third down conversion for Wisconsin. Everybody standing on the defense. No rush. Stavi caught. Touchdown, Jacob Pedersen. Chris has been calling for him the whole half, and the Badgers finally found him. Well, it's tight end down the seam. In his eyes will allow Pedersen to get home, but here comes Pedersen down the middle. Now, Stavi's eyes will look the defenders off, which gets the safeties to jump inside. There's Tanner Miller working to the backside, has no idea Pedersen is behind him, and Desmond King can't get there, and that big body is able to catch the ball at his highest point and score. So they've done just about nothing on offense the entire half, and Wisconsin poised to have the lead at halftime as Jack Russell adds the extra point that puts the Badgers ahead. Six plays, 72 yards. First time in the game, the Badgers have crossed midfield. And they go all the way across midfield into the end zone. Back in Iowa City, time for a Pacific Life game summary. Wisconsin just scored to take the lead on a 72-yard drive. They had 47 yards of offense prior to that touchdown drive. 44-yard pass. Stavi to Pedersen. Defensive struggle on a breezy day. As a matter of fact, the breeze blows the ball off the tee as Andrew Endicott gets ready to kick off. Just seven first downs in the game. Four for Iowa. I get you probably going into halftime. I was kicking themselves a little bit of getting that close in the scoring territory and coming away with field goals. Prior to that last possession, the longest gain of the day for Wisconsin was 10 yards. They had plays of 13, 11, and 44 for the touchdown on the scoring drive. Jordan Cotton returns the kickoff. Vince Beagle stopped him. Time to answer the trivia question. The Big Ten leads the FBS. They have 13 trophy games among the two teams going head to head. Also have some that involve teams from other conferences, but that's a question for another time. <laughs> Which conference is second? You want to guess? Uh, I, somehow I think uh, the Pac-12. Mm. <laughs> I wonder how somehow you thought that. <laughs> you wait for it to appear on the screen. No. It somehow is pretty apparent. Here's Damon Bullock. Is in under the gun. The ball carrier, Pat Muldoon, took him down. Okay, give me even one of the Pac-12. <laughs> Too bad, we gotta go to break. <laughs> Trophy game. Well, that's good. You have a whole two minutes to think about it. Back in a moment. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Shannon Spig, back in Iowa City, Iowa, Wisconsin. Number 24 in the nation, leading the Hawkeyes 7 to 6. Badgers just used the timeout there first. Iowa's three left. Wisconsin two, but it's the Badgers thinking about trying to force an Iowa punt into this strong win. Jake Rudolph throws short, high, and almost a terrific catch by Taman Smith, but he couldn't hang on. Sojourn Shelton had the coverage. Oh, and again, open receivers not being hit by Rudolph down the field. Man coverage and a nice route by Tavon Smith, and almost a great catch. And Wisconsin gets to save a timeout with the incomplete pass. In unfairness to both quarterbacks, tough day to throw the ball. The wind is definitely impacting the flight of the football. I was just two for nine on third down. They don't like third down and eight. Few teams do. And under pressure, Rudock threw it away. So plenty of time with the minute 28. And two timeouts left for the Badgers to do more damage. They should get excellent field position after a pun to the wind. Well, again, they're coming with blitzes right here. 
Schobert, number 58, who's getting an opportunity to play in the nickel situations, gets the hit and forces the underthrow by Rudolph. On his horn draft punts. And he's like, Bell got away from it. Hawkeye fans think it hit a Badger. No indication of that from the officials yet. And the officials say it did not. Ruling on the field, the ball was not touched, recovered by the receiving team. First down. See right there, the ball's... Ooh, I don't know if it clipped his heel or not. I gotta trust the officials that are right there on it, but... But, Sean, you take a look at number three for Wisconsin Doe. His poison call where he starts waving guys off is really late. Well, the replay booth is either going to stop it or Kirk Ferentz did. The previous did. play is under review. A couple things on that. Again, there's got to be a communication with the punt returner. If he's going to let that ball hit, he's got to do all his power, hand signals, and vocal to get guys away from the football. And right here, he is late with the poison call. There's a little poison call. And there's Southward. And I don't know if it hit his heel right it there. It, it, from this angle, we can't tell. You're right. I think they got it right on the field. So it looks like there's... You know, nope. the, Good call. You know, the action of the ball doesn't really change. Looked like from the previous angle there was space between his foot and the ball, and looks like there is there too. Excellent call by the officials. Terrific shots by our crew, led by our producer Bo Garrett and our director Mike Schwab. It's a 36-yard punt into the wind. That's an excellent job by Connor Cornbrath. Well, you've had a lot of extra time. Do you have any of the Pac-12? trophy games since you were so sure of the answer I'll go with the victory bell who plays for the victory bell that's you know, of course everybody knows that UCLA and USC <laughs> for a man of your considerable <laughs> faith your lack of integrity with these trivia questions is absolutely alarming I'm not very good at trivia I know the X's and O's I don't know the trophy so apparently when I got a, a pig bull trophy <laughs> After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Good call. If you're curious, Arizona and Arizona State play for the Territorial Championship Cup. Cal and Stanford for the Stanford Ags. UCLA and USC, the Victory Bell, and of course, Oregon and Oregon State. Lots of time for Wisconsin here to take advantage of the win. 117 and two timeouts. Washington and Washington State play the Apple Cup. That's the other one. Movement. Carl Davis saying he was drawn across by the Badger offensive line. John O'Neill is the referee. Ball start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty still first down. And Carl was right. It was Kyle Costigan guilty of the infraction. They had a nice little stun on there, Sean. You remember that stunt earlier where Morris came on the blitz and the two guys went toward him, the two interior defense tackles. He was going to come around. Now they're going to go to four-man pressure. First and 15. Stabby four out of eight passing. Finds his man, Jacob Pedersen. He's across midfield and a yard short of the first down. Tackled by James Morris. A gain of 14. They'll go up quickly. And that's the matchup that uh, they need to get to. And what's that going to do is help Aberderis and Stavi connection later on. Stavi, far sideline, first down. Aberderis out of bounds. Just the second catch of the half for Jared Aberderis. First and 10, 52 seconds left in the half and two timeouts for the Badgers. James White to the 35. 
Christian Kirksey made the tackle. And Wisconsin's going to use one of those two remaining timeouts. One now for Coach Anderson. One timeout left and only three races left in the chase. Jimmy Johnson and Matt Pensif now tied atop the standings with Jeff Gordon in the rear view mirror after his win in Martinsville last week. I'm sure Chris predicted that. We'll make a move this week. One of NASCAR's fastest tracks. It's the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at Texas Motor Speedway tomorrow at 2 on ESPN. I'm not even going to ask you because I'm going to go straight to where you get all of your information <laughs> on NASCAR. Here's Shannon. So the guys at Texas Motor Speedway every year they do a theme and it's deadlocked. That's the theme of the weekend. And they have bacon brew shakes this weekend, guys. What do you think about that? Mm. Sounds great. <laughs> Stabby, shotgun on second and one. Fires for Aberderis and it's batted away. Well covered by B.J. Lowry. Good job again by B.J. Trusting his arms. You can see right there he does have long arms for a corner. Avoiding any type of body contact with Aberderis. And you'll recall that Wisconsin has issues with their field goal kicking. Kyle French had been their kicker for much of the year but he got the hook. And they went against Northwestern a few weeks back. And Jack Russell's very inexperienced field goal kicker. James White in trouble and can't get the first down. Hitchens had him around the waist, and James Morris came to help his fellow linebacker. And now Gary Anderson has a decision to make. It would be about a 53 yard field goal try with the wind. You could throw a Hail Mary if you let the clock go all the way down. Yeah, and just so you know that Jack Russell, Gary Anderson told us last night that he gets a little nervous at about 42 yards for a field goal attempt. He's only tried one kick. And he missed it. Kyle French was five out of eight to start the year. But he had missed a couple of costly kicks against Ohio State and a short early miss against Northwestern. So Kyle French got the hook and he Apparently, according to the newspaper, French wrote on his Facebook page that the coaches told him not only is he not the field goal kicker, but they're not sure they want him to come back for his senior year. <laughs> so yeah. They apparently have really moved on to Jack Russell. Well, and don't forget, Sean, that Chris Borland was supposed to be the long range field goal kicker, at least going into the Illinois game. And Chris told us his range was 45 to 55 yards. Yeah, if Borland had been healthy today, he might have very well been trying a long field goal he got the attention of the Wisconsin coaches on the former staff at their camps when Borland was in high school in part because he was such an outstanding kicker and putter so here's Jack Russell sophomore trying a 54 yarder with the wind and it is I would call the timeout. Yes, they did. That's why there was no signal. Looking good from here. Nobody moved under the crossbar. Well, that one thing that does is it gives that young man, Russell, number 97, some confidence that he can hit from there, and it gives his coach well, the confidence. Either that or he's thinking, can I really do that again? <laughs> yeah, well, I prefer to be the optimist of the group. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, too, with these long field goals, is sometimes kickers try to overcook it and they drive the ball low. So if you get good penetration up the middle, you're able to get a block. And you're looking at Carl Davis, who's six foot five, six foot six, with long arms. So I'll keep an eye on his penetration to see if he can get a big Paul up there. Russell tried two field goals last year and missed them both. He did kick some extra points for them. And he's 0 for 1 this year. He's trying to kick the first field goal of his career from 54 yards. Well, now you wonder what's going through Jack Russell's mind. Well, I would think that I hit one. I know I can hit it again. And, and when you go in this type of situation, what you want to do is just concentrate on your fundamentals, make sure your steps are right. And just kick the ball and knowing that you have a wind helper behind you like you do when you stand on the tee box. Well, that's why I'm saying if I'm Jack, I'm not sure making the previous one because a lot of times 
when you hit the really good drive right down the middle, you get up there the next time and say, well, I think I got my good one out of the way for a while. So, but obviously, he's a good kicker. He wouldn't be in this situation. In the game, as we step back and look at the way the half's gone, I guess not surprising. These are two of the best defenses in the country. Both are in the top 12 in total defense and scoring defense, and the wind helping the defenses as well. Coach Ferentz is living true to will never take a timeout to the locker room. I like it, though. I think it's a young kicker, and you make him wait as long. The other thing is, is he warmed up. He's been standing out there, and he's going through his steps, but... There's Gary yelling for Jack, trying to get his kicker over there. Yeah, trying to keep him loose. You can yep. see him smiling and laughing, just trying to say something. It's always a dilemma for coaches when it comes to kickers. Do you say something? Do you just let them go? They're their own world. I never knew how to treat them. Basically, get out of the way. Russell was a highly recruited kicker coming out of high school, ranked number 65 in the country by our folks at ESPN. Well, all those timeouts might have paid off. Halftime, and Wisconsin leads despite just 146 yards of offense in the first half. Did not have the distance like he did on the first one. Let's go down to Shannon Spake. I know that was a little bit of pressure on your kicker right there, but offensively, why do you think it's taken so long for you guys to get in a groove? Uh, a great defense, number one. I mean, I was, like we said earlier, they're tough, they're well coached, they do a nice job, and we had more offense on one drive than we had the whole rest of the first half. So, just like we thought, there's not a lot of surprises in the way this game's going out. You got two good teams battling out, and away they go. Chris Borland not playing, and while I think you guys have certainly gained a coach and a motivator on the side, where has he missed most on the field? Just his playmaking ability. And I would say second to that is leadership. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. The standard Marcus Trotter's done an excellent job. A team high six tackles for Coach Anderson. They thought he'd be strong, particularly against the run, and he has been. 7-6. The Badgers lead at the break. The halftime report right after these messages. We welcome you back to Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes taking the field, getting ready for the second half. Wisconsin leading seven to six Badgers have the lead despite the fact that that's their lowest point total in the first half this year the previous load been 14 twice and their two losses in fact against Arizona State and Ohio State so if you're Iowa are you happy about the way you played in the first half are you a little bit disappointed despite a great job on defense you're behind yeah I'm happy about my defense obviously but I think the one thing that they're struggling with is how we do we get in the red zone how do we capitalize and score touchdowns instead of settling for field goals? So we'll see if they make any halftime adjustments in the red zone if they do, in fact, get in there in the second half. It will be Iowa ball to begin the second half. Kyle French kicks off. And he's kicking off into the breeze, which was a big factor in the first half. Really affected field position. French, who's been supplanted as the field goal kicker, out there to kick off. Taken by Jordan Cotton. And a good return. Tackled by Nate Hammond at the 31 yard line. Here's a look at our Pacific Life game summary. For well, the pressure, the Hawkeye defense forced the Aaron throw by Stavi. And again, forcing him to throw off his back foot, making him uncomfortable. And the timing of the blitz is being called by Phil Parker. Right here was the big play to Wisconsin, Sean. Used his eyes to move the safety, hit Pedersen down the seam for a touchdown. Well, Iowa trails at the half for the first time this season. And Mark Weissman carried for a loss of a couple. Here's Shannon. Well, Sean, Iowa head coach Kirk Ferentz told me there were no guarantees that the pressure and the timeouts that they called at the end of the half would put pressure on the Wisconsin kicker, but it worked. He said it wasn't science. Something else that isn't science is what they need to do to score in the red zone. He said mental errors, it's all about concentration in this half. 
First time they did not score a touchdown in the first half this year. Actually, they've led at the half in every game prior to today. They're five and three for the season. Damon Bullock dropped for a loss. Ethan Hemer made the tackle. Well, so often we hear about the swim move as a pass rush technique. It's also used as a run stopping technique. Hemer did a great job of disengaging and setting his defense up for a third and long. Good player, former walk-on. Interesting, two runs with the wind at their back here in the third quarter. Trying to get the ground game going. Iowa's rushed for just 45 yards so far. They average 189 a game. Safety blitz picked up. Jake Rudock throws, no chance. In the general direction of Damon Powell. Sojourn Shelton had the coverage. <laughs> Denzel Doe back for the punt and Connor Cornbrath. Didn't get it up into the wind. The line drive and hits off a Doe, and it's a free ball. Looking like Nate Hammond had a chance off the ricochet. It came first to Hammond of Wisconsin, but he didn't secure it. And they're still fighting for it. There's a battle going on. And Wisconsin has it. Desmond Southward came up with it. Right here, Doe got caught in indecision. You got to make a choice. Either go for it or stay away from it. Don't get caught in between. And right there, Desmond Southward, number 12, is in there fighting to make a big play for the Wisconsin Badger offense. And he won the battle at the bottom of the pile, 38-yard punt. Loss of two on the return. For the field position is the 33 for Joel Stabe. Six out of 11 in the first half. Corey Clement went on that jet sweep motion. And Melvin Gordon got planted by Anthony Hitchens at the 36, a gain of three. He's a good football player, very instinctive. Makes a ton of tackles. Again, if you were with us at the beginning of the game, the strength of this Iowa defense is the intelligence and playmaking ability of that linebacker unit. They've impressed. They've impressed me so far mm -hmm. in this game. Well, Wisconsin to 65 yards rushing. The Badgers average 297 per game. Gordon, the running back. Stavi had to get rid of it. And as a result, threw too high for Derek Watt. Pressure again affecting the throw of Stavi. Where he gets in trouble, his feet get, gets out of whack right there. He's throwing it off his back foot, and he had him open, Sean. He just could set his feet a tad. That would have been a big play. Way off pace to post their usual numbers, but they're playing against an outstanding defense on a chilly and breezy day. They're two for eight on third down. Here comes the blitz. Stavi got belted and threw a wobbler incomplete. It was a safety blitz by Tanner Miller. And Stavi's taking a couple of shots today. Number five, Miller. Coming from a linebacker position to safety. They're gonna, there's a bunch of guys standing up here. They're doing nothing. They're a smoke screen to allow Tanner Miller to come free. James White jumps inside. Miller's able to hit Stavi right in the midsection to force the high throw. Good design by Phil Parker. We've seen that on both sides where both defenses are standing up. They do that to create blocking scheme confusion. Drew Meyer to punt for the fifth time, averaging 30 yards per punt. Rugby style kick again, gobbled up by Kevante Martin Manley, and he's yanked down. Good coverage by A.J. Jordan. 36 yard punt. 12 and a half to go, third quarter. Still 7 6, Wisconsin. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Vizio. Don McDonough, Chris Spielman, Shannon Fake back at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Just underway, second half. Number 24, Wisconsin, leading 7 6. 
First and ten for the Hawkeyes from their own 28 yard line. Sean Daniels the freshman back in and running back wants to make sure he knows the play and they give it to him. And you see how that offensive line pushes the defensive front back. Ethan Armstrong the tackle. Marcus Trotter filling in for Chris Borland the outstanding linebacker unable to play today due to a hamstring injury and Chris Trotter's been more than good. Yeah you know the thing I love Sean you don't have to be a fan of Wisconsin just be a fan of football college football when you see young kids get an opportunity to come in and have an impact when they get their shot and Marcus Trotter certainly has done that and Chris Borland has shown great leadership. Team high seven tackles for Trotter Rudock pulls it down Jake runs. And did he get far enough for the first down it appears he did it was Trotter who chased him out. The good decision you don't want to force it if nothing's downfield you take that throwing lane you turn it into a running lane they caught him in man coverage. He understands where the weakness is and they get the first down. They needed that They need to get some type of rhythm going on that offensive side. Murdoch, very smart young man. We mentioned from South Florida, came here to Iowa largely for the pre med program. He throws a deep ball over the head of Camonte Martin Manley. With Murdoch's former high school teammate Desmond Southward in coverage. Well, they ran a wheel route against man coverage, and he had a step on Southward. This is what you hear every Saturday. Every announcer will tell you about a wheel route. You see number 11, he's going to go out, then he turns it down the sidelines, and he has him open, Sean. And Rudock's good enough to make that throw. He just overthrew him there. Rudock said when he came and visited, the first thing he noticed driving to campus was the hospital right across the street from Kinnick Stadium. His pass is caught by Don Shumpert senior from St. Louis nice catch as he was cutting over the middle covered by Peniel Jean. Well, this is what we call a skinny post you see he's going to take that angle and it's a well thrown ball because it's delivered on time. That's a total timing route if he throws that football late usually a safety because of the angle of the cut route will jump in there and get it but he was perfect timing to hit Shumpert. Play fake by Rudock. Now 10 out of 20. And he throws it up for grabs and incomplete. In the general direction of Shumpert, who just made his first catch of the day on the previous play. Good for 18 yards. We heard the crowd go, ooh. That's because Martin Manley was running wide open. And he runs a double move. Rudock's eyes come off of him. You see that? You see Manley taking off down the field. Another missed opportunity for the Hawkeye offense. Here's the double move right here. Rudock was on him, then his eyes left. That's six points that they missed out on right there. Second and ten. Rudock has a man in the flat. Damon Bullock taken across the far sideline by Brendan Kelly. The you know, staple of this offense is tight ends. They have not been involved much in this passing game. Now third and six, third and seven. This is a chance where they can make their presence known. Fedorowicz is their second leading receiver for the year has just one catch today. Third down and seven that's been a big part of this game. Iowa thrives on third and one third and two third and three they've had a lot of this kind of yardage to go on third down today. Hot. Damon Powell short of the first down. And the crowd wants Kirk Ferentz to go for it on fourth down and one. They're already two for two on fourth down today. I'm going for it. You know why? I have the win. My defense is playing well. I've not gotten any rhythm at all for most of the game offensively. I'm going to take my shot here. They are going for it. Megan Pleva comes in as a fullback in front of Mark Weissman. Weissman hit behind the line of scrimmage and did not get there. Didn't even get back to the line. And Wisconsin takes over on downs. 
Well, are you ever going to replace Chris Borland? No, but can you get a player play great for one day? Yes, you can with number 59, Marcus Trotter. It starts out with guys bouncing the ball to him. Now take a look. This is what you love. You see Marcus Trotter not jump inside, split that seam, and is able to meet the powerful Weissman in the hole, making a play for the Badgers. A young guy coming off the bench replacing Chris Borland. Outstanding. Take a bow, young man. He certainly helps because just about everybody in the stadium knew that Weissman would get the ball. They were relying on his power and that fine offensive line, but they lost the battle that time. The handoff to Jared Aberderis. And he goes for 11 and a first down for Wisconsin. The chess match continues with the jet sweep. So it's not successful running with Gordon. Let's try Jared Aberderis out of a different formation. And you see right here, they brought Tanner Miller up. But when you have a big tight end like Jacob Pedersen able to secure the block, Jared Aberderis can be a running back in the open field. Outstanding run after catch guy. You play Wisconsin, that's one of the things you have to deal with right there. A lot of shifts and motions. Make sure you get lined up correctly. James White dragged down by Anthony Hitchens. But he got to midfield for a gain of three. On second and seven, Stavi handed it off out of the shotgun to James White. He got a yard, and then he got buried. Hitchens in on the tackle again. Tanner Miller up from his safety spot. The third guy in on is Desmond King, the true freshman corner. When you can get that many guys on a tackle, it helps with the caliber of trying to bring down James White. He's a good little player right there. True freshman, not overwhelmed, plays in the moment. Third down and six. Wisconsin just two out of nine on third down. Came in at 48% for the year. Stabi, another blitz. He has time and has his man. And it's dropped by Aberderis. Uncharacteristic for Jared Aberderis. And the Badgers will punt from midfield. Self-proclaimed bad hands when he first started playing wide receiver. Turned into great hands. Took that one for granted a little bit, and you won't see that very often. Jared Averderis with a drop on third down and a chance for a first. Drew Meyer will punt to Kevante Martin Manley. And Jared Averderis, who told the story, asked if he could walk on, said this first fall he dropped about five passes in a row one day in practice didn't know if he'd be invited back the next day great punt and they're down it at the one and that was into the wind which has given Meyer a big problem for a lot of the day ABC college football presented by K Jewelers brought to you by AT&T, rethink possible. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Jaguar, see the new model year lineup at jaguarusa.com. Another tradition as part of this rivalry, the Iowa and Wisconsin football managers played an eight-man flag football game called the Rusty Toolbox. And there's the prize. Tradition that began in 1991. They get before the night before the game between their two football teams. Badgers won last night, 19 to six, for their third victory in a row. Look, the quarterback for the Badgers, Jake Rudock, the quarterback for the Hawkeyes, throw it up for grabs, and it's intercepted by Darius Hillary. Rudock felt a little bit of pressure in his own end zone and made a poor decision. And Hillary, the sophomore from Cincinnati, has his first interception of the year. Sean, it's all about reading the corner, throwing the corner. Hillary is playing actually a nickel, but he's outside. He's drifting back. When he starts drifting back, you throw that ball away because they manned up Cox underneath with Southward. 
And that's just a poor read by Rudolph. Throw that one away or throw it in the dirt. It's the sixth interception of the year for the Wisconsin defense. Scotty pulled it down once and has his man for a touchdown. Jared Aberderis held on to that one. Second touchdown pass of the day for Stabi. One to Pedersen and now a 20-yarder to Aberderis. At midway through the third quarter, it's 13 to six with the extra point from Jack Russell to come. We need just one play after the interception. Still a one-score game. Wisconsin leading by eight. Hillary, the interception. Stavi to Aberderis. Iowa turned the ball over for the first time today. Wisconsin capitalized immediately. One play, a 20-yard touchdown pass. Joel Stavi to Jared Aberderis. And it's a 14 to 6 lead for Wisconsin, number 24 in the BCS. Likely would have to win out to have a chance at a Big Ten title, also a chance perhaps at a BCS berth. The kickoff up into the breeze by Andrew Endicott. Fielded at the 26 yard line by Ray Hamilton. When you're playing two safeties deep, you're expecting help. Help should come from here or her. First of all, a jam at the line of scrimmage would help your safety. But when there's pressure and straight up the field with zero help, he's left on an island. You can't put your safety in that position. What should have happened was Jam Morse, nobody in front of him, has to get depth and carry the inside receiver to the safety so he does not have a two-way go on a safety. The backup quarterback is in the game. C.J. Bethard in for Rudock. So don't know if Rudock got hurt on the interception. They're just trying to spark the offense, but Damon Shannon Bullock will find out. And she already has. Damon Bullock dropped for a loss. Here's Shannon. Sean, you can see the trainers working on Jake Rudock right now. They actually had him on the ground. They're looking at his left knee. But immediately when he came off, the backup quarterback started to warm up. And now you see him in the game. So they continue to work on Jake Rudock on the bench. I'm just giving you the heads up. The next one. They had a lot of confidence, Greg Davis did, and C.J. Beathard and Kirk Ferentz. We talked to him yesterday. And they had a spirited battle in the preseason to see who the starting quarterback would be. Beathard dumped it off short to Jake Doozy. Cody Sokol was also part of that three-way battle. And in the end, they settled on Rudock, but they said Beathard has a very strong arm and might be a little bit better running the football when he needs to. And then Rudock, he was just one for three for the year entering today's game for that 33%. Grandson of former... NFL executive Bobby Bethard, outstanding personnel man. So he knows the game. Third down and four. Iowa. Bethard, flush to his left, throws, and it's incomplete. Diving effort by Jacob Hillier. Another three and out for the Hawkeyes. They are two for 13. On third down, both coaching staff said yesterday third down would be key when Iowa had the ball. They have to be in third down and short, and they haven't been there often enough. No, and when they get there, Wisconsin's doing a good job of locking down the wide receivers. They have a chance for big play, Sean, that they left on the field so far this game. Connor Cornbrath punts. A rocket with the win. Enzel Doe. And it's well covered. Christian Kirksey, the starting linebacker down there. Here's Robert Flores. All right, Sean, right now on ESPN, Illinois looking for their first conference win of the season. They get within four with this little flip from Nathan Shieldhouse to Josh Ferguson. Right now, Penn State leading 14-10, starting the fourth quarter. All right, Robert, thank you. After a 54-yard punt, and a one-yard return by Doe. 
Badgers ball, first and ten from their own 15. Stavi shifted under center. Melvin Gordon, the tailback. And he's chopped down by Tanner Miller, the safety up there again, close to the line of scrimmage. More Big Ten action right after our game on ABC, number 21 Michigan in East Lansing to take on the great defense of 22nd ranked Michigan State. The Spartans with just one loss on the year. ABC's college football presented by K Jewelers at 3.30 Eastern time, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. What Devin Gardner is going to show up when he's good, he's really good. On second and eight, Melvin Gordon had a big hole in the middle. They might have been paying attention again to that jet sweep action. And it's a first down for Wisconsin. Yeah, Sean, anytime you do that, you have your safeties in the box. They come out of the box. Hitchens vacates his gap. What happened was Hitchens and Morris got in the same gap, and Melvin Gordon, we talked about it during the break, he's got to get some touches going. Nine carries for 35 yards. And about his average right there, a little more over his average for 12-yard gain. Leading rusher in the Big Ten at 144 and change per game. Gordon with a flag down. Tackled at the 37 by Christian Kirksey. There are a lot of referees in the crowd of 70,000 plus <laughs> hollering for that holding call, which was pretty obvious. A very knowledgeable crowd. Like you said earlier, a great college venue for football. They're so close to the field. Offense number 73. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Dallas Lou Allen. He's the center. Well, he's got a one technique. That means the guy's shaded to his shoulder on the run side. And I think what happens, he gets that right hand up around the neck area, and that left arm is locked to the other arm. It's a sneaky technique on Carl Davis, number 71 who helped sell it very well. <laughs> he wouldn't have gotten a B minus in that basic, basic acting. acting class that James Moore struggled in. <laughs> James White. Made a little move with the line of scrimmage, but didn't get far. Mike Hardy made the tackle. Junior from Appleton, Wisconsin, who admitted during the week that he grew up a big Badger fan, Green Bay Packer fan. Said he came to Iowa for a variety of reasons, and he doesn't regret it. I grew up cheering for the Badgers and the Packers. He did a good job right there, using his hands inside, playing his gap, disengaging with the blocker, and for a minimal gain on James White. Second and 18, three and a half to go, third quarter. Joel Stabi complete to Jeff Duckworth, his first catch of the day, sixth of the year for the senior from Cincinnati. James, James Moore is slow to get up. They started to send a sub in. He said, no way. He's a tough kid. Smart, can run. Really is the quarterback of that defense, and they put a lot on him to get them in the proper defenses against the variety of formations that they'll face. He grew up a huge Hawkeye fan. His dad's the equipment manager here, Greg Morris. Third and 14. Stavi throws, and Doe is belted out of bounds short of the first down. And then another holding call, and that one was pretty obvious as the pressure was coming right up the middle. John Loudermick, the safety limping, and he is going to come off the field. Holding, holding. offense number 54. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. They turned it down because it is going to be fourth down, and with this field position, Gary Anderson isn't going to go for it, so the Badgers will punt. Sean, I played with John Laudermilk's dad at Ohio State, Kirk Laudermilk, who's a fine center at the Vikings for a number of years, and with the Colts, a guy that would get to do anything he could to get his block. That's why I love him, even when I played against him. 
Through Meyer Pond straight up into the air. And it'll be down at the 39 yard line by Connor O'Neill. Just a 24 yard punt. Tonight, ABC's Saturday Night Football. Great ACC matchup. Miami, number seven, but a three touchdown underdog at number three, Florida State. Presented by the new windows tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. One of the great rivalries. Great to see it being a meaningful game again. 13th time in the history of the series. They've both been in the top 10 at the time of the meeting, but the first time since 2004. Big hole, Jordan Canzeri, his first carry of the day. Michael Caputo takes him down. That's the longest run of the year for Iowa. Their previous long was 37 yards. That one goes for 43, and they line up very quickly. Well, I always talk about vision of a running back, Sean. Right here, his shoulders are square. He has the ability to cut back. Marcus Trotter, who's done well, overruns it just a tad, and Kanziri knows what to do. He get, he's getting an opportunity. He's certainly going to make the most of it. Martin Manley, nice job blocking downfield. First carry of the day for the sophomore from Troy, New York, Kanziri. DJ Beathard, the backup quarterback, still in there. Kanziri trying to turn the corner, has the speed to do it. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 12 by Ethan Armstrong and Michael Caputo. What the call by Kirk Ferentz to give the fourth guy a shot? You get nothing going with your first three. Why not give Jordan an opportunity? So far, he's taking advantage of his opportunity. It's a little winded. <laughs> he's not used to running the ball two times in a row. Here's the lone back behind C.J. Beathard on second and five. Manziri. <laughs> No gain wrapped up by Warren Herring. Brendan Kelly also in on the stop. And the clock will run under a minute to go in the third quarter. Sean, I think you really got to get the tight ends involved. I mean, that's where they're most effective. Fedorowicz is outstanding down here in the red zone. He presents a matchup problems with safeties and linebackers because of his size. I was going to use a timeout. Big play call here. They want to make sure they get it right. In their final seconds with the wind in this game. And again, that's been a factor all day long. Could be big as we go to the fourth quarter as well when Wisconsin will have the wind back. Well, it is, and you're playing with a backup quarterback, so you want to give him all the advantage you can down here. So if you have a play where he's throwing the ball, this will help him. And again, I'm going back to get Fedorowicz involved or Doozy involved. The big tight ends, third and six, third and five medium. That's where they can run effective routes. And finally, the explosive play, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, talked yesterday about the importance of plays, runs of more than 12, passes of more than 16. He said you'd ideally like to have nine of those plays a game. Iowa averages about five. They just got a big play from Kanziri. Can they capitalize? Damon Bullock is the running back on the right hip of the backup, C.J. Beathard. Beathard throws over the middle, knocked down. At Muldoon, right in the middle of that defensive front. So the Badger defense holds, and Iowa will try a field goal. Well, he's looking for Fedorowicz running down into the middle. The problem is Caputo does a good job, and Muldoon, realizing he's not going to get there, gets the big paws in the air for the deflection. 30-yard field goal try from Mike Meyer from the right hash mark. And it is good. Well, Myers two for two prior to that one from 28 and 22 and now he's added officially a 29 yarder to get to three for three for the game. A look at the Big Ten standings. Wisconsin at three and one. 
So the one loss at Iowa, at Ohio State rather. So essentially they're two games behind. And you'd have to think, Chris, they need to win out because they'd lose the tiebreaker if they have the same number of losses with Ohio State. And Ohio State's schedule is so soft the rest of the way. Michigan, the toughest game yep. left. It's hard to imagine them losing. No, because I think what they have going in their favor, and we talked about this last week, is that they need to put style points. So they're focused, and they're probably going into games, not just winning the game, but winning them by a large margin. It's too bad they don't play Michigan State. You know, you almost would love to see that great defense at Michigan State and Ohio State match up. Mike Meyer will kick off with the win. Been able to bang it into the back of the end zone, kicking off in this direction. And returnable. Dell wants to try it, and he does. About three yards deep. And didn't pay off. Not only to the 18. Moon Myers made the tackle. Here's Shannon. Well, guys, Jared Aberderis was not on the field during that offensive possession. He was actually in the locker room. He was being evaluated for a chest injury that happened on that touchdown pass. He is back on the field right now, but they have not cleared him to get back in the game. He's just walking up and down the sidelines. You see him right there with his left hand clutching that rib area. And he left the game against Northwestern very early with a concussion. He's far and away their best receiving threat at the wide receiver position. Crowd trying to make life miserable for Stabi, and there is a flag down. They did not get the playoff. Yeah, that's frustrating because he's trying to audible. He didn't recognize the defense. He tried to change the play too late into the play clock. <laughs> the loss of Aberderis. He has 46 catches this year. The next highest total among Wisconsin wide receivers is eight by Jordan Frederick, who hasn't caught a ball today. James White, the running back, is second leading receiver for the year. Here's Melvin Gordon. Spun through one tackle, but didn't get away from Desmond King. If you're Wisconsin, wouldn't you just let the quarter end and go to the other end and play with the win? Absolutely. It looks like that's what they're going to do. Well, on a windy day in Iowa City, the defenses are dominating. 24th ranked Wisconsin leads 14-9. The defense set up the second touchdown of the day. Darius Hillary, the interception after Rudock got hit on the throw. Aberderis the catch. Getting fired up, bouncing around. On the near sideline, they're down by five as we go to the fourth quarter here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Wisconsin ball with the win. Joel Stabi swings one out to James White. And he fights very close to the first down on second and 11. He got nine. James Morris, Christian Kirksey, B.J. Lowry all in on the stop. Competitive accuracy. That's what offensive coordinator Andy Ludwood talks about, giving the guy a chance to make a play after he catches it. That time, Stabi was right on target to James White in stride. So he can transition to the catch to the run smoothly. 129 yards for Stavi. He averages 212. Third down and short. James White has the first down. You get the feeling that Wisconsin's very comfortable in this type of situation. They've won a lot of ball games over the years eating clock by running the football and putting the onus on those big guys up front. 6'6", six, six, what, 315, 320-pound average? 
It's the third third down conversion of the day for the Badgers of three for 12. Operating from their own 30. The play fake to James White. Stavi pulls it down. And gets to the 36. Good run by Joel Stavi. James Morris and Drew Ott made the tackle. Stavi's a very smart young man as well. Civil engineering major. He told us last night that he used to have a 3.7 GPA, but then he became the starting quarterback. And the academics have suffered a bit because he's focused more and more on the football task at hand week to week. I'd still take a 3.3 all day long. Mm -hmm. Very smart, dedicated student athlete. High formation behind him, Melvin Gordon. Offended by Desmond King, who's been impressive today for the Iowa defense. Yes, he has shot not only in pass coverage, but more importantly in run support. If you're going to play in this Iowa defense in your corner, no matter who's the coordinator, Norm Parker or Phil Parker, you got to be physical on the edge, and he certainly is. Reference to the great Norm Parker, longtime assistant defensive coordinator for Kirk Ferentz here at Iowa. Great to see Norm Parker here today. Third down and two. Stabi on a design roll, takes off running and has the first down. Or he gets driven back. At the 48 yard line. So a doubt in the game plan. Runs for Joel Stavi were high on the list for Andy Ludwig, but that 10-yard run matches his longest of the year. Uh, great decision by Stavi to tuck it and go, and really a poor angle by James Morse, who had a chance to stop him short of the first down, and Stavi just gave a little cut inside and used his big, tall body to get the first. Twelve minutes to go. Wisconsin by five. Nice cut by Gordon. He got five. Here's Roberts. Well, the Buckeyes on their way to nine and zero oh and five and zero oh in Big Ten play. Who's still winless in conference action? On second down, Gordon breaks some tackles. And a whack by Christian Kirksey and John Loudermilk. You know, you just get the feeling, and as a defensive coordinator, I would be very nervous because Melvin Gordon's one of those guys. He gets two yards, three yards, and next thing you know, he's off for 80. He's got to stay solid in your fundamentals. Third down and four. Trouble with the ball. James White's on it. But a loss back to the 50, and Wisconsin will punt with under 10 and a half minutes to go. Yeah. Stavi wasn't looking for the snap. That's why there was trouble with the snap. See, he's trying to bring it in. Lou Allen is quick. There's a miscommunication, and a lot of times in a shotgun formation on the road with noise, that can disrupt the communication in the snap count. It was very loud in here. Loss of four. It looked like Stabby was looking at the play clock when the ball was snapped. Drew Meyer puts this one straight up in the air, hoping for some help from the wind. Got plenty of help on the bounce. All the way down to the five yard line for Darius Hillary. Downed it. 45-yard punt, 18 of it on the roll. Let's take a look at the top of this week's BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos. Five of the top ten have this week off, including the top two, Alabama and Oregon. Interesting to see if Florida State does beat Miami and perhaps handily as the odds makers think if that's enough to move them up. Uh, you know, I, I think those three teams are interchangeable right now. And of course, Oregon's getting ready for the big one Thursday night against Stanford. C.J. Beathard after the play fake back into his own end zone. Deep ball and incomplete. Looking for Tavon Smith, sophomore from Toronto. 
Crowd wanted to flag. They're not going to get it. Michael Pudo, Desmond Southward, both trying to get over there in coverage. Well, not a bad call trying to catch him off guard and throw deep to your deepest threat. It's Tavon Smith. You know, this is a challenge. For a team that struggles with explosion and they're trying to get explosive with a backup quarterback. Operating into the wind. Behind the change now on second and ten. They give it to Jordan Canzeri. We bang forward to the nine, a gain of four. Marcus Trotter, another tackle with help from Connor O'Neill, and we're under nine and a half minutes to go. I think after they watch his game film, Sean, you can see Chris Borland there cheering on his backup. If they give away game balls for defensive players, right there, number 59 gets one. At least we'll give him a helmet sticker. Third and six. Beathard throws and a traffic and caught. Somehow got it through to Don Shumpert. Out to the 26 and they convert on third down. Well, what a strike by Beathard. Again, it's the skinny post, the timing route. And Tanner. McAvoy, the former quarterback, the 6'6 free safety, was just late jumping that route in their nickel formation. A great throw by C.J. Beathard stepping up to the challenge. Seventeen yard gain. Another play fake. He's in trouble. Throws deep down the field. And it's incomplete. Intended for Shepard. Well, the defender, Hillary, had a better shot at it. There is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage for a holding call against the Hawkeyes. Holding. Offense number 68. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Brandon Scherf, the outstanding left tackle. Right here, you can see, again, he was a little bit suspect in pass coverage. Run blocking, he's outstanding. He got his hands on the outside. Then see that right arm come down with the bulldog wrestling technique? You got to be disciplined enough to let your hands go. I know you want to finish, guys, but not to the detriment of your team. He's a great player, though. Really good football player. First and 20. Draw to Kanziri. Spun down by Ethan Armstrong. We're at the 22. That last possession by Wisconsin didn't result in points, but they took five minutes and 48 seconds off the clock, and they did shorten the game. And that's why I'm thinking if I'm Iowa, I want to get a little bit of tempo going here because it does take you a long time to matriculate the ball down the field. These fans so quiet when Iowa snaps the ball. Beathard hit as he throws. It's up in the air. And it's intercepted. Marcus Trotter was the man who put the heat on the quarterback. And Pat Muldoon came down with the ball. Once again, Sean, I talked about Here's a guy that should get the game ball or at least a helmet sticker. Trotter coming from the outside is going to get with a little bit of a blitz. Timed it perfectly. Beats Bullock. And is able to alter the course of the throw. And Pat Muldoon for a big defensive end comes up and makes an athletic play. Leaving his feet and getting it with the two hands. What a great effort by Muldoon and Trotter. And the first interception of the year. 6'3", 270 pounder. Senior out of Mason, Ohio. So from the 25, the pitch back to Melvin Gordon. He's dumped for one yard loss. Christian Kirksey, Mike Hardy leading the defense now midway through the fourth quarter. A nice job by Mike Hardy out in open space. 270 pounds athletically staying with Melvin Gordon. If they could force a field goal, try even if Wisconsin were to make it, it would still be a one possession game.
timeout called by Wisconsin. Up by five. ABC College Football presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Dr. Pepper 10, the manliest low calorie soda in the history of mankind. And Chevrolet, find new roads. Unique view of the Iowa Interstate Railroad. Rolls just outside Kinnick Stadium. A lot of these fans take the Hawkeye Express to the game. Well, with that turnover, Iowa now minus one for the game. And the turnover margin has told the story all year long. They're 5-0 when they win the turnover battle. They're 0-3 when they don't. They're on the short end of it right now. Stavi a throwback screen. Jacob Pedersen tripped up as he got to the 10. Looked like he might have tripped up over his own feet. He pounded the ground. Desmond King was there, perhaps got a piece of him, but you could tell Jacob thought he should have remained upright. It's a well-designed play right here. They're going to come screen back off the play action. And they have blockers out in front. You see Pedersen just sitting patiently. And King does a nice job of getting in there because if he doesn't trip him up, he's dancing in the end zone with his teammates. Huge difference at this juncture between a touchdown and a field goal attempt. James White slides through the hole, touchdown. Looked like he was bottled up at the line of scrimmage, but all of a sudden he emerged, went the 11 into the end zone. A huge touchdown for the Badgers. Nice patience. And they've worked on this little dance, and there it is. Gordon and White. The teammates support each other, feed off each other's energy. Very competitive. They compete for carries every week. And see number six right there? It's the future of running backs for Wisconsin. Corey Clement. An injured player, Brian Wozniak, a tight end for Wisconsin. He's about to get up, it seems. That was the 40th rushing touchdown of his career for James White. The senior from Fort Lauderdale, he leads all active FBS players in rushing touchdowns. He leads all rushers in career rushing yardage. He's just gone over 3,300 yards for his career. The average is better than six yards per carry for his career. Here's Jack Russell for the extra point. White probably hasn't gotten enough credit for all that he's done his whole career. He's had to share time with other great backs like John Clay or Monty Ball, now Melvin Gordon. But the Iowa coaches and players were well aware of this man coming in. And he just scored a huge touchdown for Wisconsin. You know, the three qualities I want in my running back are number one. Patience. Right here you see James White being patient. Number two, vision. Find the hole. And perhaps the most important physical quality, burst to get through that hole. James White possesses all three. And the dance, which is starting to catch on. As a matter of fact, Wisconsin Athletic Department made a video. It's been getting a lot of views of late. We'll show you some of it in a moment after the kickoff by Andrew Endicott. Two score game now for the first time today. Jordan Cotton. Back to the 23 yard line. Jerry Ponio made the tackle. Barry Alvarez, Ron Dane involved in this dance. Doesn't seem that complex. You and I are clods, but even <laughs> we could probably learn how to do that. It would take a couple rehearsals, but I think we could get it down. CJ Beathard throwing deep. Receiver's feet got tangled up, and now there is finally a flag. 
Devon Smith came up screaming. He didn't realize as he was barking back toward the line of scrimmage, the flag was flying behind him. I don't know. I think Darius Hillary grabbed a little bit of jersey because I saw the Iowa sidelines go nuts down there screaming for the flag, and the flag was late, but the proper call. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I like the attack mentality. Good move off the ball. You see the grab right there by Hillary on Smith. Smith has a bright future, Sean. He's, he's just got to get a little bit more consistent, and he's going to be a good player for a couple years for the Hawkeyes down the line. Getting better every week. Line of scrimmage, the 38. C.J. Beathard, pump fake, throws deep, and it is incomplete. The ball's out. Damon Powell couldn't hang on. Boy, Bethard throws a good-looking ball, even this one into the wind. Well, and that's been the story of today's game for Iowa. Blown that opportunities to, to make big plays. They have not made them, and that's, you know, that's the synopsis of their game, of their offensive performance. Missed opportunities all over, and not great catches. Those are catchable balls that D1 players should make. Beathard, look out. Took too much time that time. Couldn't find anybody. Pat Muldoon, Brendan Kelly, Warren Herring all there for the Badger defense. And a big loss on the sack back to the 30. Well, quarterbacks have that clock going off their head, and this is a coverage sack. It's not on the offensive line. He's got to make a decision, and one would be to throw it away. First sack of the day for the Badger defense. Goes for a loss of eight, third down at 18. And here comes a blitz. Beathard throws, and again, the receiver, this time Smith, got his hands on the ball, couldn't catch it. Sojourn Shelton, the coverage, and then a little slow to get up. I like the attack, I like the back shoulder throw. But this is one where he has to come in. Now, Sojourn gets his hand in there, but a, a ball that could be caught. And one thing you want to look at, he had Fedorowicz open also on a crossing route. They're just not looking for the big tight end who's supposed to be a part of their offense. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down and 18. And as a result, Wisconsin called a timeout. Didn't seem as though they believed they really intended to snap the ball to C.J. Beathard. 5.25 to go. Here's our Pacific Life game summary with 5.25 to go here in Iowa City. Wisconsin leading 21-9. Marcus Trotter outstanding. Filling in for the injured Chris Borland who dressed but did not play today. Nine tackles. Big quarterback Curry a moment ago. After the timeout, Iowa will punt. Cornbrath, low line drive. He takes a nice bounce. And trickles down to the 25-yard line. Down by Gavin Smith. Two timeouts left for Iowa. Wisconsin try to run out the clock as we take a look at today's good hands play. Brought to you by Allstate. It was a touchdown grab by Jared Aberderis. The last play in the game in which he appeared. Looked like he caught the bottom part of the ball. But held on. Two arms around it. As he got whacked by John Loudermill. And again. Seem to suffer some type of rib or chest injury. Not speculating, but that was the area that was being checked out. He's a key part of this offense, and it might have been well, something just knocked the wind out of him. You want to protect him for next week in a tough game against BYU. James White, the ball carrier. Christian Kirksey made the tackle. Well, the Iowa defense has done a terrific job today. They've held Wisconsin about half of their normal numbers in total yardage and rushing yardage. But the Iowa offense hasn't managed very much against the Wisconsin defense. Pretty good. David Randall was upset. Thought he played their worst game of the season in their last outing two weeks ago at Illinois. Gave up 32 points. And he blamed himself. He thought... He didn't coach the defense aggressively enough after Wisconsin raced off to a 21 to nothing lead in that game. 
I think he'll be very pleased with this performance today. Now the offense trying to salt it away. James White. Tripped up by Anthony Hitchens. They're going to mark it at the 17-yard line. Well, it's the same play that they scored the touchdown on in the patient's vision and burst. <laughs> he exercises those qualities again. You're going to see Pedersen come across here and pull him, be a lead blocker, getting a seal block and kick out. You see James White making a lot of milk miss in the hole. And Hitchin does a great job of saving the touchdown with a linebacker chases down and running back from behind. Amazing how quickly your stats can get a lot better. 59-yard run gets White to 121 yards for the game. His 14th career 100-yard rushing game. Melvin Gordon finds a big hole. Touchdown. Flag down. Two flags down. Back to the line of scrimmage. And it's coming back for a hold against Wisconsin. Holding. Holding. Offense number 61. 10 yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Tyler Merritt's the left tackle. Tyler Merritt has been solid all game. Take a look and see where he commits the infraction. Does a good job of swinging those hips. Mm. I, I thought the hands were inside, but they had a better look than I did. Good solid offensive line on both sides. I think both sides have been impressive up front. The sophomore from Springfield, Minnesota. On first and 20, Melvin Gordon ran into Christian Kirksey. We send it back to Robert. All right, an update on Illinois and Penn State. The Illini with their first lead in the fourth quarter of a Big Ten game since 2011. Josh Ferguson had the go-ahead score, but now they're tied at 17. Coming up later on here on ABC, Max Bulla in Michigan State in a rivalry game with Michigan. That's later, right here on ABC. Sean. All right, Robert, thank you. Second and 16 here for Wisconsin, about to salt it away with three minutes to go. Leading 21 to nine. Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon got two, and Iowa will use one of its two remaining timeouts. Three races left. Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth are dead even atop the chase standings. With his win last week in Martinsville, Jeff Gordon's right behind. He moved from 13th to third. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Texas Motor Speedway tomorrow at 2 on ESPN. Of course, live on Watch ESPN. Greg Biffle and Jimmy Johnson got into a little altercation off the track. Let's see if that carries over this week in the Texas. Matt Kenseth runs well at Texas. Mm -hmm. Really does. Yeah. In your expert opinion, how will it carry over? What would you anticipate might happen? I, I mean, I, I don't know if, if those guys take whatever altercation they have on off the track, if they take it on a track, if he gives them a love tap. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, to me, Jimmy Johnson showed remarkable restraint. If you saw the clip, he's being interviewed, and Biffle comes out of nowhere. Horse collar. Yeah, basically horse collar and spun him around, and Jimmy Johnson was remarkably composed. Mm -hmm. well, I guess you're, if you're a race car driver and there's... Things that happen that you don't expect, you got to regain your composure. So maybe his on track training translates to the off track. He responded well. He really did. Better than I would have. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Biffle would have been ducking something <laughs> if he had spun you around like that. Here's Melvin Gordon. Tackled by Desmond King. The 59 yard run by James White a moment ago was Wisconsin's eighth run of the year at 50 yards or more. They lead the nation. A lot of times you think it's the team is predominantly a running team and can't be a big play team. They are when you have these guys, White and Gordon. Yeah, and that offensive line, it, it amazes me to that you can stop them, stop them, stop them, but you can never go to sleep because they have two game breakers in White and Gordon. And I'm telling you, they're really excited about number six, Corey Clement, as, as they move on to the season. They're very confident. Now, he didn't get his carries today, but he's going to be a key part of this Badger offense for years to come. And the coaches have been telling White and Gordon, 
keep it going because <laughs> this guy is pushing with your heels for more carries. Gordon's been held to a season low 62 yards today. But White's over 100. It was interesting, the running back coach, Thomas Hammock, texted Melvin Gordon, reminding him <laughs> that there's always competition. But that's what makes those guys, that trio, so good. Badgers going for it on fourth down and four with 250 to go. No timeouts now for Iowa. James White inside the five. Touchdown. Where are they going to give it to him? One official signal he's down about six inches from the goal line. Well, this is where James White scored a touchdown. This is where James White gets a 59-yard run. And this is where James White gets a key first down. Same power play. Gap blocking, pulling backside guys to be the lead blocker. And Loudermilk with a rodeo move. Tackling the steer. We'll take a look at it in the replay booth. Meanwhile, there is an injured player for Wisconsin, the center, Dallas Llewellyn. He missed their game at Ohio State with a leg injury, and it really hurt them. That was a tight loss. Both of their losses have been by a touchdown or less. They have some strange numbers in that regard, Chris. Their last 12 losses have all been by seven points or less. We think of all the success they've had in recent years, but you also think of how much more they could have had had they won so many close games that went the other way. The last time Wisconsin lost to anybody by more than seven was a 10-point loss in their Big Ten opener at Michigan State. Back in 2010, on the other hand, when they win, they hammer people. Their last nine wins prior to today have come all by at least 24 points. You know, that, that's such a unique number, and to think that, and that's a credit to the Wisconsin program, what Brett did when he was here, and now the addition of Gary Anderson, an outstanding coach, always well-coached football teams. And Volts comes in for Llewellyn. First and goal, White. Stop for a loss. You know, Wisconsin would probably like to score again, but the other option here is just to run out the clock now that Iowa doesn't have any timeouts left. I think at the very least, you run that play clock down to three or four seconds before you snap it. Use all the time, fundamental. White has 130 yards rushing today. On 18 carries, averages 96 yards rushing per game. They give it to him again, surging toward the end zone. Touchdown! Going airborne. Hmm. Tough to tell from that side. And here's from the far side of the field, and that's the vantage point of the official. And Ruley on the previous play was a touchdown. Far side of the field, he made the call. It looked like he got it right. It looked like he just did break the plane before he got knocked back. And that call will likely stand. Second rushing touchdown of the quarter for James White. See right here that ball is in the right arm. Oh, it's really tough to tell from there, there but I think is. you're right, Sean. It I think like it did the ball. Break. Yeah. All it has to do is get to the beginning of that white line. And it looks like it did. We we'll talk about After further review. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Talk about Wisconsin, Chris. I think in both of our minds this win today should get them to seven and one they were robbed of a victory in their game at Arizona State on an officiating error that denied them a chance to kick a short field goal in the final seconds and win the game and with two losses they're still in there for a BCS bid they almost certainly have to win out but one loss 
you wonder where they'd be in those BCS rankings. Yeah, you Especially with a win over an Arizona State team that's been good since. Well, I think, Sean, for them, as you look at their remaining schedule, for them, they're a good team. They're going to be tested next week. I mean, BYU is a good offensive football team. And right there, though, you can think of that game. They're, they're pretty much in command of that schedule and will be the favorites going into all those games. They're a good football team. They're better than people think or realize because they do it ugly and old-fashioned. Good, solid defense, a punishing running game, and an adequate passing game. With this win, Wisconsin will be bowl eligible again for the 12th year in a row. It is the longest active streak in the Big Ten. Kyle French will kick off to Jordan Cotton. Iowa's going to need one more win down the road here to get back to bowl eligibility after that four and eight season of a year ago. Jordan Frederick made the tackle. Von Cotton coming up in just a few minutes, about 10 minutes away. Michigan and Michigan State spirited rivalry. And then tonight at 8 on ABC, Miami and Florida State. Are you surprised Miami's such a big underdog? They were talking on game day this morning, 21 points the spread. And in FBS games this year, teams favored by 20 or more, 109 and 0, according to Chris Fowler, who there's no better, more dependable source. Yeah, a little bit in a rivalry game, I'm surprised, but on paper and watching the teams play in the eyeball test, not really because it's nothing against Miami. They struggled in some games, but you and I have seen Florida State twice. And you can make an argument that they're the best team in the country. They certainly look to be talented at every position. When you try to find a weakness on that Florida State team, you really can't. But it's another chance tonight against Miami to score points with the pollsters. Well, and you look at what Herbie said on game today. In order for Miami to have any chance at all, Duke Johnson has to get going on that running game. And that will certainly help Stephen Morris. C.J. Beathard completes a pass to Tavon Smith. Third down at about a yard for Iowa. Duke Johnson, part of a talented running back group at Miami. Jameis Winston try to enhance his Heisman Trophy candidacy. Mostly right now it's a three-man race. Marcus Mariota, Oregon, Winston, Johnny Manziel. Yeah, I think that's about right. And, and Sean, I, I look at it like this, and we've seen a lot of quarterbacks, and to me, Jameis Winston is the most NFL-ready quarterback right now. I'm not saying he's the best college quarterback, but he's the most NFL-ready quarterback. If there were a draft, I bet you that he'd be the first overall pick. Incomplete pass to Tavon Smith. C.J. Beathard still a quarterback. You mentioned his dad, his granddad's Bobby Beathard, a great executive for a long time in the NFL. His dad is Casey Beathard, who was a well-known country music songwriter. I know it had a truck in there, but it's a country music. <laughs> Ooh. Son took a little shot in the head. There's a flag thrown deep downfield in the backfield. Michael Caputo ran him out. You know, my son told me, country music, Dad, four chords in the truth. So if he sticks to that formula, it probably works. Tracy Beathard's written some top 10 singles for Billy Ray Cyrus, Trace Adkins, Kenny Chesney, Holding. among Defense, others. Number 21, 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. He's working on a single right now called If the Receivers Can't Catch the Ball, <laughs> My Son Can't Complete Any Passes. Then the old Gene called for the holding. And my dog loves me when we ride in our truck. So they're out near midfield. That's Bobby Beathard, well known for helping build those great Redskins teams with Joe Gibbs, won Super Bowls. CJ, taken down by Desmond Southward. Final minute to go. Wisconsin will go to six and two overall, four and one in the Big Ten. And I will drop to five and four, two and three in conference play. 
Now the Heartland Trophy will remain in Madison, about 177 miles from here. Beathard, deep ball, man open. Damon Powell held on to that one inside the 15-yard line. We're going to mark it at the 11. He's not shy about throwing a deep ball, is he? He gets back there and slings it. And confidently so. Getting valuable reps, too. Like your backup, getting quality reps when you don't have a chance to win the game. Second and 10 from the 11. Beathard given a lot of time, throws to the back of the end zone. It's batted away by Southwood. Intended for Cavante Martin Manley. Iowa needs one win to be bowl eligible at Purdue, which still hasn't won a game in the conference, has won one game all year. Michigan's here, and then they're at Nebraska. That's a new addition to their trophy games, the fourth trophy game that Iowa will play, the Heroes game now against Nebraska. But then again, Chris knew that because he was the authority on trophy games. Oh. That third, again, a lot of time. Incomplete in the direction of Kevon Smith. And Iowa's down to its last play. Beathard just four for 15 off the bench for 70 yards. He's thrown a lot of deep balls down the field. Here comes a blitz by Wisconsin. Smith as it batted away. Well defended by Sojourn Shelton. And Wisconsin takes it over on downs. Well, they did not allow a touchdown today, just three field goals. Celebration has begun on the Wisconsin sideline. Gary Anderson reminding his troops we have to snap it one time here. Took over the game, got the running game established, especially in the fourth quarter. Well coached team, a very good team, and an underrated team in my opinion. And certainly in solid defense that you don't hear much about. Stave took a knee. And Wisconsin retains the Heartland Trophy. Chris, so much attention on that Wisconsin offense, but the defense is starting to get more and more recognition. That was a strong performance today without their leader, Chris Borland. And, and what I love about it, they're well coached by Dave Arnanda. They do a good job of executing their assignments, and they don't make mental mistakes. And Shannon Spakes with Gary Anderson. Well, the Heartland Trophy stays with Wisconsin. I don't know what you said halftime to those guys, but it worked. What was the biggest difference in the second half? Uh, nothing I said. I can promise you that much. Uh, you know, they just kept competing, and we kept doing what we do and try to get the, the, the run game going and made a couple plays. I'm just proud of these kids. They fought like crazy and did some tremendous things today. And, you know, we didn't have one of our kids with us. Tyler dipper has got a, a serious situation at home. So, Dip, we love you, kid, and uh, we're on our way back home with the trophy. Certainly another unknown coming into this game was the absence of Chris Borland. Marcus Trotter, he had a great game out there today. What did he prove to you? Well, he, you know, he steady Eddie, and he loves the moment. He's a very physical kid. He loves games like this, and he got in there and produced and did tremendous things. And as you can see, he plays with an unbelievable amount of energy, and you know, he, he's a leader for us, even though he doesn't get as many snaps as Chris Healthy, but he leads every single day. Thanks, Coach. Enjoy the ride back to Madison. Of course, Marcus Trotter, James White, they could take turns sitting next to that trophy on the way home. Trotter, a big reason why the Badgers held Iowa just 115 yards rushing today. Final score, Wisconsin 28, Iowa 9.
More great college football on ABC coming up next Michigan and Michigan State. Don't forget tonight, Miami and Florida State. Now for Shannon Spake, Chris Spielman, and our great crew, Sean McDonough, saying so long from Iowa City, Iowa. Let's send you back to the studio now.